I want to show you the least sexy photograph of a woman I have ever seen. Check it out! That is S.E. Cup, who you may recognize from Bill Maher's HBO show or from her frequent guest appearances on Red Eye, which airs overnight on Fox News Channel, which is hosted by Greg Gutfeld, who is probably, he's got to be, the least funny human being on the planet not named Glenn Beck. Um, I mean, if I can try to put how, how funny Greg Gutfeld isn't into perspective, if, if I were offered the choice between watching Greg Gutfeld try to be funny on TV for an hour or somehow traveling back in time to relive the sad final hours of my grandfather in the hospital, I'm going to go with Pap dying in the hospital. More of a laugh. I saw that photograph of S.E. Cup today during my meanderings on the internet, and it just struck me as odd. Why would you take a photograph of yourself holding Atlas Shrugged? I mean, I, I know why. I know that that sort of thing certainly appeals to a specific demographic. There are guys who see that photograph, and it's probably like, instant hard on. Uh, but to me, it's the exact opposite effect. I just think that's the least attractive thing I've ever seen. It would be as if my profile pic on my Facebook page or, or my user pic on my blog or on Facebook were this. You know, ooh, hey, he digs Carl Sagan. Check that out. Or, uh, or this. That last one, by the way, I'm naked in. You can't tell because of the cropping, but I'm completely nude, except for that. I want to talk for a few minutes about atheism and morality. Uh, S.E. Cup is an atheist, although if she didn't remind me every so often, you'd forgive me for forgetting that. She's, uh, she speaks far better of religion than any atheist I've ever met or ever known. Um, not religious people, mind you. I'm all for atheists being friends with and admiring and speaking well of religious people. But religion itself. I, I, I just made a video the other day about how I, I don't want to push away religious people. I don't, have, I don't want to have a problem with religious people, but I do have a huge problem with religion. And S.E. Cup, as an atheist, doesn't seem to have any problem with religion, which makes me wonder why she's an atheist. But uh, I, and I think I know why. She's an atheist because that's her act. She's the atheist who takes up for religious people. She's the, the atheist who's friendly to the religious right. That's just her gimmick. And it's worked. She's on TV all the time. She gets to go on Bill Maher and on Red Eye and uh, call into nationally syndicated radio shows, and she gets to publish books about how we all are too hard on religion. And it's just, it's, it's an act that's working for her, so good for her. You know, it's a tough world out there. She found something that she could make a living off of, so keep flogging the act, S.E., I guess. But that got me thinking about how in the last few days, certain voices from the right side of our political spectrum have been going out of their way to point out the apparent fact that Jared Loeffner, the Tucson shooter, uh, is an atheist. I've heard Hannity mention it. I've heard Glenn Beck mention it. Uh, Sarah Palin talked about it recently. That uh, Going out of their way to, to mention, to remind us, in case we didn't know, that Jared Loeffner apparently is an atheist. The implication to my way of thinking being that it was in some small part Loeffner's atheism that made his crime possible. I, I watched a clip from Lawrence O'Donnell's show uh, yesterday where he had a, a Republican member of the House of Representatives on whose name I can't remember at, right now, I, I'm, uh, who kept saying almost as, as a, a talking point that uh, we need to all, we all need to see each other as children of God, and that will increase our appreciation for human life, and these sorts of shootings would be less likely to happen. Well, I don't think my fellow human beings are children of God, mainly because I don't think there is a God. 
But I'm troubled by this implication, as I hear it, that Lofner's atheism somehow permitted his act. For one thing, I don't think it makes much sense on its face, because there have been far more cases of devoutly religious people committing horrific acts of violence just in the last few years than there have of avowed atheists going out and shooting up a mall or uh, a supermarket in this case, or a school. Uh, the vast majority of those sorts of public displays of, of violence where a dozen people will get shot or killed and at a time are done by religious fanatics for explicitly religious reasons. So I don't see how atheism has such a bad record in that respect. The other problem I have with it, and the real big problem I have with it, because it's a problem of philosophy and, and just the, the a misperception, I think, on the part of some, is that atheism is descriptive. It's not prescriptive. And that's a very important distinction that I think we need to draw. Atheism is a belief about the nature of the world, about the nature of the universe. Atheism says that there is no God, and that's all atheism says. Atheism isn't morally permissive. If anything, atheism is morally silent, you might say. It, uh, it has implications for morality. Obviously, if as an atheist you believe there is no God, then you also believe that there is no God to dictate our morality to us from on high. So. In that sense, there's no such thing to an atheist as an objective moral standard. But there's something very close to an objective moral standard in, in an atheistic worldview, at least in my atheistic worldview, and that is the idea of the moral consensus. That there are certain moral codes that almost all of us agree on, and that are accepted almost unanimously around the world and in all cultures that we have found. For instance, uh, the prohibition against murder. Uh, almost all of us agree that murder is bad. So that is close to an objective moral standard. But it doesn't come from God, it comes from us. Our morals come from us. We made them up for our own benefit, and they have evolved along with us. You can't blame an atheist's bad behavior, no matter how monstrous, on his atheism any more than you can blame a child's bad behavior on the fact that he doesn't believe in Santa Claus anymore. I remember when I first figured out that there was no Santa Claus, I didn't suddenly turn into this bratty, juvenile, delinquent type kid who threw rocks through people's windows or shot passers-by with pellet guns or egged my neighbor's house and soaped their car windows. I've been doing that stuff all along. Just like when I finally decided that I would identify myself as an atheist. I didn't suddenly turn into an asshole. I've been an asshole for years. Ask anybody who knows me. Or just watch the other videos. I think it's fairly apparent.